Hello everyone, Laser here, welcome to my channel where we talk about games and hardware and today I'd like to talk to you about the recent release and the info that Nvidia shared with us about their new and upcoming cards, the 3070, 3080 and 3090 um, but I don't want to talk about the new cards that they already announced but something they, that they didn't talk about, so the 3060 which for most of us should be a very interesting choice for gaming in 1080p. We don't have any information about those cards. Nothing has been mentioned, nothing has been released. We don't have any rumors about the 3060. But I think we should be able to, based on historical dependencies between the cards, between, based on the differences between the, the 2070 Super and 2060 Super, we should be able to more or less calculate what the power of 3060 will be like. So in this video let's try to guess what the power and what's the performance that the 3060 will offer. Before we can do that we need to look at what Nvidia has already announced when it comes to the new cards, so the 3070, 3080 and 3090. What have been the previous dependencies between 2070 and 2060 Super, both of them Super, we can probably with a small margin of error calculate what to expect from the 3060 when it's already released or when it's when it's being announced. So first of all let's have a look at 3070. Uh, the card has 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM and it's it has a 1.73 gigahertz boost clock speed with a 1.5 gigahertz base clock speed as well as 5888 CUDA cores which promise a lot of performance for full HD gaming but probably for 2K and 4K as well. Now moving on to 3080, we have 10 gigs of GDDR6X RAM which is slightly faster than the non-X version, uh, 1.71 GHz boost speed and 1.44 base clock speed and 8704 CUDA cores. Finally, the behemoth, the archdemon and the destroyer of wallets, the 3090, this massive card in terms of size as well as performance boasts 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X RAM with 10,496 CUDA cores and 1.7 gigahertz boost and 1.4 gigahertz base clock. So as we already know, the 3070 will cost cost around $500. The 3080 will cost around $700 and the 3090 will cost $1.5,000, pretty expensive. All of the above cards promise great performance when it comes to gaming and we already saw that Nvidia released the gaming benchmark for Doom 3 where we could see that 3080 is fully capable of playing games at 4K and over 100 FPS which is great for everyone who's planning on switching to 4K gaming but the gaming gear for 4K is pretty expensive so you Apart from buying the car itself, you also need a very expensive 4K gaming monitor. And if you really want to see the difference between the 3080 and the 2080 Ti, for example, you'll also need a gaming monitor that has a refresh rate bigger than 60 Hz for 4K. So that's a big hit for your wallet. Okay, now let's try to guess what can we expect from the 3060 when it's announced. In order to do that, we'll need to look back at the previous generation of cards and try to calculate the dependencies between the 2070, 2080 and 2060 Super. And when we have that information, we can adjust it to the new generation and based on what Nvidia is promising. So for example, the 3070 should be equal to 2080 when it comes to performance. I should be able to calculate what to expect from the to be announced graphics card. When we look at the benchmarks, we can see that, for example, in Metro Exodus at 1080p, we can see that the 2060 super performed at roughly 58 FPS, which is more or less 82% of 2070 super's performance. In Total War Warhammer 2, which is slightly more CPU demanding game, the difference is even smaller, the 2060 performs at roughly 88% of 2070's performance. We see similar performance differences in other games as well, in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, 2060 performs at 89% of 2070's. The biggest difference you can notice will probably in Far Cry 5, as the car performs at just 80% of the 2070 Super, so around 20% difference in FPS count, which should already be noticeable. Now, based on that date, I think it's pretty safe to assume that 2060 Super on average performs at about 85% of 2070 Super's performance. It also matches the price difference because the 2060 Super is around 18 to 20% cheaper than the 2070 Super. If Nvidia's claims are right and the 
3070 will perform at around 2080 Ti's level, then it's safe to assume that 3060 will be around 15-20% to slower than the 3070. And now if we look at the benchmarks comparing 2080 and 2080 Ti, we can also notice the difference between 2080 and 2080 Ti, especially in 1080p gaming, is roughly at 20%. So if we put it all together, I think it's safe to assume that 3060 should offer the performance of 2080, the non-super version, the basic version. And I think that's quite important for a lot of us because 2080 offers enough performance even now to play AAA games at 2080p on very, very high settings and a very high FPS count. So for anyone who's wondering whether they should buy 3070 or maybe wait for the 3060 or even maybe wait for the AMD's uh, lineup of cards, I think that's the right choice. I think you should really wait, hold on for a, bit, a little bit longer, because in my opinion the 3070 is for someone who wants to play at 2K or at 4K with a slightly lower settings, while costing still around $500. The 3060 when it's released, I believe it will offer enough performance to play all the AAA games at 1080p with high refresh rate on very very high settings and if the price difference between 2070 and 2060 will transfer to the next generation we should expect the 3060 to cost just around $400 which is $100 less than the 3070 that has been announced recently. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any thoughts you'd like to share, just leave them in the comments, I'll try to answer all of them. We are still waiting for AMD's release of the RDNA 2 graphics card. AMD already hinted that their new graphics card, the next generation graphics card, should offer performance similar to 3080. If this turns out true, we might see a lot of competition between Nvidia and AMD, which should affect the prices as well, which will be beneficial for us as gamers. If you don't really need to replace your PC, if it's working fine, just, just don't buy the new graphics card just yet, wait a little bit longer. And I think that every owner of the 2080 Ti can confirm that it's worth waiting for the new release. <laughs> I'm really sorry for those guys who already bought the 2080 Ti and now to see the numbers of two, on 3070 and 3080. I'm really sorry about that guys. Yeah, but that's, that's basically it from my side. I hope you enjoyed the video. I would love to hear your thoughts and I would love to know whether you'd buy the 3060 if it turns out that it will offer the same performance as 2080. Let me know in the comments. I'll talk to you soon.